um, we were very moved by how connected you are to the agricultural space. Join me, Apioko Sarah Mashong Abe, on Diplomatic License every Saturday at 5 p.m. only on City TV. Hello and welcome to the City Newsroom on City TV. We are also live on DSTV Channel 363. My name is Premier Dunami. And I am Bobby Osei. Coming up. Senior law lecturer at the University of Ghana, Professor Emmanuel Bene, allegedly murdered in his home by unknown assailants. President Dana Adedankweku Faru promises customers of defunct microfinance company DKM that they will be paid their locked up funds by close of this month, September 2020. End of September. Also coming up, we bring you the troubling statistics of teenage pregnancies in Jamestown in Accra and some parts of central region. In when in Kalanya war square square in Kalanya Musi Sibeni a ballet lockdown in a ballet war who far do a war in your no in your mask. And later on, disagreements erupt at the hearing of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament as majority MPs allege political motives by a minority in asking public interest questions. Now in our first story, a senior law lecturer at the University of Ghana, Professor Emmanuel Yalbene, has been reportedly killed at his Hadrian Ghana home in Accra. Now the law professor was allegedly murdered by unknown assailants. The East Ligon Police Command confirming the incident said the matter has been referred to the Accra Regional Police Command for further investigations. It is unknown the motive behind his killing, but his former colleague at the law faculty, Dr. Pukwe Dusei, in a Facebook post said, Professor Yao Bene of Legon Law has been murdered in JB style in his Adrian Ghana mansion. Now, since 1990, Professor Emmanuel Yao Bene has taught public international law in related courses at the University of Ghana School of Law. Now, in some other news, President Takufado has given the strongest indication yet that all customers of defunct microfinance company DKM will be paid in full by end of September. Now, Lene Kufado says government has put in place the needed measures to ensure that payments are made to customers by the end of the month. City News' Sami Uyafi has more. Speaking at a gathering of chiefs and people at Wenchi, as part of his tour of the Bono region, President Kufado revealed that government has secured the needed funds to pay all customers who had their funds locked up with DKM. The payment, he says, will be done by close of September 
2020. The MPP in 2016 promised to pay customers of DKM who at that time had their funds locked up with the microfinance company. Then in opposition, the party accused the Mahama administration of reneging on its responsibility to come to the aid of the customers. President Okufado says all locked up funds will be paid this month. DKM. Yera Mahama Okono. Ujaka Wanachi. Bebia, before I come one, the letter here. When just come, I mean, so I can't do Ujabi. I DKM is also a car home. Then, num. She said, Pay, I have Bob Organic Sika Paso, Sika, a quam Paso, and Tino, and they to me and your Sika, you did your DKM Forka. Bebre and Yaw Sika did out. What is who said, and say, you cheer Binuka by the end of September, Bosumi Betratuono, na Obia or Ghana, the Sika could D DKM Mono, that is Saka the Sika. Now we're giving the money. Yeah, yeah, the Sika, Obia Sika 100%. And the Mano. Yeah, and your percentage payment are now. Amahama Bay area. We're paying everybody in full. Obia and Saka the Sika. Nane Kufado also advised residents to ensure that at all times they direct their investments to entities duly registered with the Bank of Ghana or the Securities and Exchange Commission. And about what my baby said, and they said, Oh, she'll be you. When the music I call baby, I the slam, who said I'm pimp, 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 mu, now mu, she baby, I when the music I make a cotto. Because if you are not baby, I never buy a beca say, when the music I call to us, you cannot cost you no better. If you don't make me a cassette, I want to do music I call it. I see, I say, Father, sir, never buy a yanis, sir, yan yanis, sir, Nelson. If you ask, you know, the other name, you know, you know, it's a mislamo. A bad soldier who seeks a quack or two babia. Shall that chance and not shoot your move? Some bank, baby, I'll do seek a coy. One more bank of Ghana license, and now, when you forbear in the Asia, so one year, yeah, prospectors, though, this other Mushe Munina and San Odu Sikato. Now, yes, I now at once, oh, who be a baby, be why to do seek a quack or say, be you, ma. Across Sub-Saharan Africa, women make up the majority of the population in most countries, 51%, for example, in a place like Ghana. So any barrier to the optimization of their talents needs to be addressed. Now, a recent report by Ghana Health Service showed that between January and June, 3,000 plus teenage pregnancy cases were recorded in the central region, Cape Coast. Now, this particular figure indicates that a majority of such persons or some of the individuals or the women or the girls who actually get pregnant and give birth are unable to continue their education which will affect their ability to optimize themselves especially when it comes to their talent so we've come to a community here in Accra Bukom to find out I mean when it comes to teenage pregnancy what is the case on the ground what is leading to you know some of these young girls you know getting pregnant and what can be done about it my name is Bobio and you're watching the city newsroom now we've been combing through this particular Ghana community currently we are in Bese close to Bukum and Jamestown and where we found one young lady who is 16 years of age in JHS2 and she is pregnant we just want to find out what her story is and what led to her being you know uh, pregnant at this young age I told me I here form two yeah you miss school private so that till I'm Memorize <laughs> 
Wow, I mean, what a touching story there. So we'll still try and speak to some more people, some more stakeholders, the parents themselves, because as the research shows, irresponsible parenting also contributes to these uh, teenage pregnancy cases that we are seeing. I mean, so when you walk through the streets of Bese and even enter some of the compound houses, you see a lot of kids such as these, you know, walking around. Some of them, you know, uh, products of, uh, you know, legitimate marriages. Some also products of teenage pregnancy. And I'm going to speak to one young girl here who happens to be 17 years of age, but I currently has a kid. I want to find out what her story is, why she got pregnant, and what the future holds for her. Lilo, when did you wear? Lilo, Lilo. Lilo. Yes, 17. Uh, what you know? uh, 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 Mini bunny on the uh, but I mean, young girl to moving as anybody somewhere in school, you know, because of our lockdown, oh, not lockdown, but as for when you when you tell for them what she's she got both in there, maybe for as when you are cool, I give for if I said, I mean, in one age, you fall around around this age, hello, I let you know, quay, or fall, not quay for. No, you like a big papa, like a cobbler, look for a cobbler, 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 a all right, so uh, well, there you have it. I mean, she has a kid, and uh, she essentially saying that the schools must be open so that the, the kids can go to school, so they do, do not engage in any risky sexual behavior, which will possibly lead to them getting pregnant before they are actually ready to have kids. Now, the role of parents as well as, you know, uh, elders in the community when it comes to teenage pregnancy cannot be understated. Sometimes parents don't have the resources to take care of their kids or they are not even around as much. So kids end up getting some of these things, attention as well as resources from, uh, you know, uh, some unscrupulous men and then they become pregnant. Now, we're trying to speak to some of the parents. I have a lady here with me who says uh, some of her kids have actually gotten pregnant. She's uh, removed one of the pregnancies. And I just want to find out uh, why she did no, Ma, open it. Uh, Obi and ye, ni amena tini pe. Ebi and ye, moko mi ala foreign lockdown. Moko mi ala lockdown ba na ne ye. Open it ye, amenyo family. Money ba, money a foreign seventy years. Money ye thirteen years. Thirteen years. Eh. Money ba ni thirteen year old girl. Ba mo a school ni a school. Ba ti na me a school na me a school. Ko ke a wa mule wo. Ne a school ni dark be tole ke kase ni ba wo. Not by lockdown, may I ask you? Cadia Nakoka may war, and I ask you a war. Cadia Nabam and Tumpasa, Nana Gaita won't be our gambler at two o'clock. It won't be our nerve. Benny won't be Waco, Sky as to Kuwe, Cadia and Cassania Bawa. No, I want to go there for you. Why not go to Coneba? Now by lockdown, what a lockdown, Niji. Wale la New York Ghana, wana ko ela. Kati saka ela Korea, ela China, ela India. Wana ko ela, ela be Ghana. Na ni wa bi abatala for six months. Ofa na, ofa na wana nje. Thirteen years bile, okay. Oa jimu su, ma bo a jimu su. Inya ma na fa na sukuwa fite. 
No, I need a man for this to go off the Yako Sukunda. No, I remember the last to go was an equance. Nikam Mulane for Bawako Rafa, Kakpo, Nimulan Tashimat Yamatole, Evanaka, Cobas, and Noah Sukun was an AM. There be a backpe, and you will have a hole, la Ulule. In a fifty years, I can follow you. I'm on the Camilla School. Some bill hang my paper. No, I'm on the school and bill four. No, he mini mini pot of like 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 That's a very uh, passionate mother there. I mean, two two of her teenage girls have gotten pregnant. One has given birth, and one. 13 years. Wow. Now, these old persons uh, you'll be seeing you know, very uh, uh, shortly actually have been in the community for a long time and they have some thoughts about uh, the rising cases of teenage pregnancy. Now, are you seeing more young ladies, you know, getting pregnant? Et so staying on teenage pregnancy, we're going to cross over to the central region where the prevalence of uh, teenage pregnancy is actually high uh, in that part of the country. Our correspondent there uh, would bring us the story. Total of 4,144 pregnancies were recorded between January and May this year in the central region of Ghana. About 283 of these pregnant teenage girls are below 14 years. This situation is of grave concern to the Department of Gender in the region. The data as captured has it that 11,350 cases of teenage pregnancy was recorded in 2018. The figure, however, declined marginally in 2019 to 10,901. In an interview with City News in Cape Coast, the Director for Department of Gender in the Central Region, Daiwil Eirakpe, disclosed that some of these teenage girls do not even know who impregnated them. There are multiple factors that may account for many of the girls who get pregnant not knowing the men who impregnate them. One, we in our work, we have seen that there is a lot of transactional sex where the girls do not have one partner, but they they get into um, unstable relationships just for survival and for certain personal effects like part, food. These are things that make girls go after men. Some parents in Dejano, a fishing community in Cape Coast, expressed their concern to City News. Yes, 
Jennifer Mills is a teen pregnant girl at Jim. I will Iraqi further disclosed plans by the government to address such issues in the country and in particular the central region. The mentorship activities is geared towards getting our girls to understand their bodies, one, to understand the career and educational development that they have to go through to become empowered women. It also provides them the opportunity to meet with mentors and women who have achieved a certain level of educational and career development so that they can learn from them and aspire to be like them. And so that started also in 2016 and we continue to do that. This year with the COVID, we decided to do the community mentorship activity, which is also ongoing across many regions in Ghana. So you're still watching the city in newsroom. Uh, we're still focusing on the subject of teenage pregnancy, and uh, we have a gentleman here with us to essentially, you know, uh, delve deeper into, you know, research they've done about teenage pregnancy uh, in some parts of the country. Uh, Mr. Kofiya, sorry, welcome to the city newsroom. Yeah, thank you. No, you you did research across 200 schools, um, junior high schools and senior high schools. If teenage pregnancy. Is it on the ascendancy? Are we seeing it lowering? Can you share some of the key highlights of, the, of your report? We were concerned more about how to facilitate re-entry of these girls when they give birth, perhaps, you know, a year from now or a month from now, into, into the next academic year. That for us uh, was, was the focus of um, our intervention. Because if you have a, a re-entry policy for pregnant girls, a policy that has been adapted by the Ghana Education Service, sponsored by partners including UNESCO, Action Aid, etc. And the policy is not working well, then it becomes difficult for girls to re-enter school. Let me give you an example. For the, the re-entry policy for pregnant girls simply says that if you, the girl is at a basic school, after giving birth, the girl should be readmitted to school and con to continue. Okay? That, that, that is fine. At a secondary school, it is impossible for that to happen. Because when a girl goes to school and is in Form 3 and gets pregnant, okay, by the time she delivers and then gets to a point where she can return, there is a certain unique ID number given to you under the free senior high school. It makes your studentship valid for only three years. That is why repetitions are not allowed under the free senior high school. If you repeat, you have to pay your fees because the voucher is just valid for three years. And government pays your fees on the basis of that particular unique number, more or less a voucher. So if you get pregnant in Form 3, by the time you give birth, your colleague would have finished school. Your voucher would have expired. And so you cannot re-enter school. Apart from that, admission is centralized. The computerized placement is the main form of admission. Whether it's a self-placement or otherwise, it is still centralized. It's not down at the school level. And so it makes it difficult to re-enter school, even if your ID, your three year, you know, had, had an expired. These issues were on earth through our research, for which we are engaging the Ministry of Education on, to make flexible the admission systems under the free scenarios so that headmasters will be allowed to undertake admissions in communities or in schools where pregnant girls who want to return to school, maybe next year, will have access to that. Thank you so much. Uh, well, that's the head of the Africa Education Watch, uh, essentially breaking down, I mean, the, the, the details of the uh, new report. Essentially, more needs to be done across board uh, from multiple stakeholders to ensure that the incidence or the prevalence of teenage pregnancy, you know, is reduced so that even uh, uh, after, you know, such young girls give birth to their kids, the systems are put in place for them to be able to reintegrate into, you know, the educational system for them to, you know, move on with their lives. You're still watching the city newsroom. 
Indeed, you're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. We take a breather here. When we come back, we'll bring you a report on how to take care of it seriously since it could be an awakening of a ruptured blood vessel in the brain. Well, for details on that story and many more, when we return, do stay with us. Rigworld Solutions. Forging the frameworks of Ghanaian industry. Engineering solutions from the heart of Takrade, Kejibil. At Rigworld Solutions, we manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings for the extractive and petrochemical industries. World-class products with local expertise. Locate our factory in Kejibil of the Takrade Takra Road. Call 302 949917 or 540 107504 Email enquiries at Solutions.com. Rigworld Solutions. Crafted in Ghana. Engineered for the world. Bad the world is impossible without time. Time is endless motion. Make time work for you. Bet Planet. Time to bet. Hello again. The Santa Hine, His Royal Majesty Utum Fosse II has called on the National House of Chiefs to desist from activities that make them belittle themselves before politicians in exchange for minor favors. Speaking at the commissioning of the renovated National House of Chiefs building in Kumasi, the Santa Hine indicated that engaging in acts that denigrate chieftaincy will cause people, especially the youth, to disregard the institution. City News' Fatih Aminu Ibrahim reports. It appears the Chief Tennessee Institution in recent times is not appreciated by the youth as it used to be in previous years. The situation has been attributed to the involvement of some chiefs in petty politics and disputes. As part of measures to bring back the relevance attached to Chief Tennessee, His Royal Majesty Otunfo Osaitu II has urged the National House of Chiefs to work to stop discrediting the Chief Tennessee Institution due to benefits they seek to gain from politicians. According to him, acts of begging for minor favors from politicians by the chiefs denigrate their position and their involvement in the development of the country. Speaking at the commissioning of the renovated National House of Chiefs edifice in Kumasi, the Asantuhini Otunfo Osaitsu II called on the chiefs to accord the needed relevance to chieftaincy in order to make it attractive to the modern day youth who do not appreciate the institution. The relevance of the National House of Chiefs and the Chieftains Institution in general will be judged by how chiefs themselves conduct the, their affairs to the benefit of their peoples and Ghana as a whole. Sure. Civil society organizations are now calling for peace and calling politicians to resolve whatever differences when the National House of Chiefs exists. Sure. Now, now it's because maybe we are reneging on our duties. As fathers of this nation, politicians came to meet you and meet you. The politicians came later. Sure. It was only after the introduction of British systems of governance that the polit politicians came here. Sure. So you are the fathers. Yeah. But why ask yourselves, why are you not being recognized as such? Sure. It is because of our own doing. Sure. Yeah. We trip to politicians begging them for certain things, so we are divided in the front. So, you have to be united. So, you should know the essence of chieftaincy. So, let them come to you for advice. 
Let them come to you for direction. Zoom. The president of the National House of Chiefs, Togbe Afeze the 14th, in his address also revealed that in their bid to make chief tenancy institution in the country relevant, the House has put various measures in place to ensure that people understand and appreciate their work. According to him, among the measures is the building of a new website to help the House and its activities more accessible to the public. Reverence required that the institution is relevant to the needs of the people of Ghana. Going forward, we will focus on bringing more sanity to the chieftaincy front, in particular disposing of the cases that are sitting in our books so that we can establish peace and unity on the front as our contribution towards peace and unity of our country, which will also be an important focus. We're also focusing on our development orientation and the modernization of customary laws and practices so that they would support rather than inhibit our development. The Ashanti Regional Minister hired the National House of Chiefs to do more in resolving chief tenancy disputes in various parts of the country. According to him, chief tenancy disputes continue to be a hindrance to development in many parts of the country and resolving such issues will ensure development and strengthen peace. Irrespective of the excellent work our chiefs have done for us so far, we still have some disputes at hand to be resolved, especially in the areas of chief tenancy disputes and land disputes. Moving on, over 2,000 tricycle drivers, uh, popularly known as Pragya drivers in Cape Coast, have thrown their support behind the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, as they have pledged to vote massively for the party. Now, this comes against the backdrop of the NDC's manifesto promise to legalize the use of motor vehicles known as Okada for commercial purposes. <laughs> In an interview with City News in Cape Coast, the Pragya riders emphasized that the NPP government has made it clear to disband the use of Okada, which they associate with for commercial use, hence their readiness to support the NDC. This was exhibited when they thronged the Cape Coast South constituency office of the party to put forward their grievances to the member of parliament of the area, Kweku Ricketts Hagen. According to them, the lack of jobs in Cape Coast, coupled with harassment by the police, make it difficult for the riders who are mostly youth to make ends meet. <laughs> The incumbent member of parliament for Keiko South, Kweku Ricketts Hagen, however, assured them of the NDC's preparedness to legalize their business when given the nod. <laughs> So it often presents itself as severe and sudden headache, nausea or vomiting, stiff neck, blurred or double vision. It may show no symptom at all until it becomes an emergency. Brain aneurysm is a condition which causes blood vessels in the brain to bulge and even rupture. If detected late, the probability of surviving is low. In the following report, City News' Beverly Blunden delves into the condition and brings you the story of some survivors. Brain aneurysm is the ballooning of a weakened area in the wall of a blood vessel in the brain, 
which can cause a leak or rupture, causing bleeding into the brain, also known as hemorrhagic stroke. It often presents no symptoms or health problems until it gets to a stage where the aneurysm demands urgent medical attention. When an aneurysm ruptures, it causes direct damage to surrounding cells and the bleeding can damage or kill other cells. At this stage, the patient would have experienced sudden severe headaches, stiff neck, loss of consciousness, double vision, sensitivity to light, confusion, seizures, and or nausea for some time. Risk factors include smoking and severe alcohol intake, high blood pressure, family history with condition, race, and gender. Surviving aneurysm is a story of a few against the many who detect the condition late and pass on or do not have the resources to undergo treatment and eventually passing on as well. I am here in the home of 27-year-old survivor of brain aneurysm, Jennifer Forson. I'm here to interact with her, find out about her condition and how she's lived it through life. Come with me. Jennifer Forsen collapsed while on set. She used to be an actress, but the unfortunate experience that day ended her dream to pursue acting, forcing her into an unending cycle of hospital visits and eventually an emergency surgery. I guess last year, um, I kind of felt stroke in my leg and I was on the stage performing. And the next thing I see was I was in a hospital. Um, it wasn't easy, so um, actually I took some water from my back. That's how come they knew that um, I had um, a leakage in my head. So we went to do CT scan at um, Sunlight. Yeah, we went there to do I think on two occasions. And then the third one, they were like, now nah, we have to operate on me. The ruptured aneurysm, hidden for more than six months, caused Jennifer to frequently experience severe headaches and sometimes numbness in her legs. I had a headache. Um, for a while, like it's been there. It even affects my tooth sometimes. I had to even use block or something to be okay. It's been there like I think um, six months or a year. Yeah, so I've been feeling it, but I don't check. And when it comes, it's like um, there's two holes in your head and they're hitting something on your head. That was how I was feeling it. So I had to even boil hot water and put my face in it on several locations before I'll be fine. It was that massive. I had to cut my hair because I couldn't take it any longer. Mrs. Doris Osei is also a survivor of brain aneurysm. She tells me her condition was characterized by confusion, coupled with vomiting and blurred vision. I couldn't stand in the sun like this, like the way I'm standing. No, when it's, I have to close my eyes. And then at one point, I forgot my alphabet. Yes, uh, when I look at it, I see, you know, I knew them, the way they look like, but as to which one is A, B, no, 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 I didn't remember anything. It took some time. You know, I nearly paralyzed. Dr. Benjamin Dabusa Akodier is an interventional radiologist. In 2019, he led a seven-member team of Guinean doctors to perform the first brain surgery to repair aneurysm without cutting the patient's skull. Beyond the headache, some of them will come with seizures. Okay, they, they may have seizures. They will also come with uh, aversion for light, we call it photophobia. So when they are in a place where there's light, you see that they are very uncomfortable. Some of them may also have change in behavior. There may be confusion, all sorts of neurological problems as a result of the ruptured brain aneurysm. If they are not ruptured, most times they don't have symptoms at all. It is estimated that 20% of people who present with brain aneurysm die before they are treated. Of the remaining 80%, about 50% are at the risk of losing their lives if not treated. And of the remainder, if treated late, the aneurysm could leave them paralyzed or with health complications such as brain damage. According to the Brain Aneurysms Foundation in the United States, ruptured brain aneurysm accounts for 3-5% to of all new strokes. And that's... Brain aneurysms are most prevalent in people aged 35 to 60, but can occur in children as well. Most aneurysms develop after the age of 40. Women are more likely than men to have a brain aneurysm, and blacks are at a higher risk. So for Doris, a black woman, 
she knew she could lose her life. Initially, before my treatment, I was scared. I thought I was going to die. I even told my family I want to have a, a video done, series of videos done for my daughters so that as they grow, they will see it, you know, I'll be advising them. But my family said no. Uh, my doctor said no, because if I had done that, it meant that I would have given up. After an aneurysm is detected, the patient is presented with the options of treatment. Dr. Sakodia takes us through the surgical procedure for brain aneurysm. There are two main types of treatment for brain aneurysm. One of them is surgical, and the other one is what we call endovascular. Endovascular is minimally invasive. That is what I do. Uh, we find an artery normally in the groin and we are able to pass wires and catheters from the groin all the way up into the brain where the aneurysm is and do the treatment for it. The treatment involves deployment of certain uh, substances into the aneurysmal sac or into that balloon that we described so that blood will no longer flow into the aneurysm. These things that we put inside the aneurysms are quite expensive. We call them coils. They have some property that actually helps to occlude that space so that blood will not come into it again. Mind you, not all aneurysms need treatment. So we normally look at the size. For some people, we'll tell you that we need to monitor the aneurysm over time. And if it is increasing beyond the acceptable levels, we can then do an intervention for such people. The surgical treatment of the condition is estimated to cost between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. Though an expensive process, Dr. Sakwadi emphasized the need for persons who suffer recurrent headaches to seek medical advice. We are not saying everybody has brain aneurysm or anybody who has headache has brain aneurysm. But it is important that when you have certain types of headaches, you seek medical opinion or medical advice because some of the headaches may be as a result of brain aneurysms. Most of us get headaches once in a while, but if you get a headache that it's so intense that you cannot do anything about it, you don't stay at home, you report to the nearest hospital. After surviving the procedure, Doris founded the Brain Aneurysm Foundation with the assistance of some people to create awareness and solicit for funds to support others to undergo treatment. We want people to come and help the Brain Aneurysm Foundation so that we can save lives. It's expensive. It's so expensive that a lot of people cannot afford it. So when they are diagnosed with it, some go home and then they go and die. The condition is not covered under the National Health Insurance Scheme. Perhaps it is time to open discussions on how the state can help persons with such conditions. While reviews are important after surgeries, Jennifer struggles to make it for her appointment. The financial burden is huge. I'm even supposed to go for a review that was in March, but um, after the surgery, a whole lot, so I don't, I couldn't afford that kind of a money. Um, um, how much do you need for the review? Um, that is almost 5000 and then some extra expenses and all that's like two thousand there so let me say seven thousand is what like i need it is crucial for one to frequent health facilities as such conditions are identified as a worst stage due to the common symptoms that comes with it for city news Bevelin, london now in some other news, the Public Accounts Committee ended nine days of sitting on Friday. The hearings focused on the 2017 Auditor General's report for public boards. Apart from the answers provided to queries by state institutions cited for infractions, the opportunity for public interest questions to be asked by members generated controversy. There is more in the following report. State institutions such as the Ghana Exim Bank, the National Media Commission, the National Population Council, among others, appeared before the committee to respond to audit queries. The element of public interest questions introduced brought up issues such as the alleged payment of 2 million Ghana cities to dancehall artist Shatawali. According to Chairman of the Committee, James Aveji, the committee will pursue all such public interest matters. Um, as you recall, the issue came up um, at the sitting, and the Ezim Bank 
made it categorical that they did not make any payment to Shatawale, which the Honorable Ras Mubarak alleged. Now, if you've not made any payment to Shatawale, and if you also recall, you realize that I took the officer through a process just to establish the fact that truly there was no payment made to uh, Shatawale, which he confirmed that they have not made any such payment to Shatawale. And you also recall that I said, well, we will continue with our investigation. And once we have the evidence available to us, we will call them uh, back to the committee to explain. Now, I'm told that the Ghana Ezim Bank has issued a statement or a release confirming that they have actually made payment to Shatawale. I have not seen that yet. Uh, if that is the case, then it means that uh, the allegation by Honorable Ras Mubarak is something to go by. And that will assist the committee's investigation in order to ensure that once we have all the evidence available, we'll call them as we promise, or as the committee promised, we'll call them back to the city. So we are still going to continue with our investigation. Whatever statement is issued by Azim Bank is going to be one of the evidence that will support the committee's investigation. But ranking member of the committee, Kofi Ochaje Kumis, of the view that the public interest matters raised so far are too political in nature. The leadership use our discretion to allow public interest. For instance, if somebody comes in, uh, ask when is the electricity which is not in my village being extended to maybe K Tower or something like that. That is a public interest question. But if you, you come and uh, make allegations that maybe some bank has paid some money, it is first of all that matter is not before us. The Auditor General has not brought it before us. It has not been certified. We cannot certify it there. So it is unnecessary question if you ask me because it is in the media so you also come and tweet it here unless auditor general has gone through the books and certified that this is an issue it is not properly before the public accounts committee do you understand because we can all, let me give you another example assuming that we bring minister of uh, uh, minister of uh, defense before us and then there's this issue about airbus all over the place. If somebody get up and see that, what happened? Uh, minister, tell us about the Airbus issue. The, you see, it is it is in the air, but it is not. Auditor has have not certified that some money has been taken. Nobody has certified. So it is that one is just a, a political issue. So anybody discerning should not bring it, and the chairman should even rule it out. That is why you should come in seek permission with ask public minister questions. So I think we have to be strict to that. Most of the public minister questions, depending upon, some of them will come to me because I'm the ranking member, especially those on my side will come to me, I'll listen to the question. If I'm not sure, it is it, 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 it's a great problem. I'll co confer with the chairman, and then we say this one will not allow it, we will allow it. And I think we should do a better job of that so that we don't, we are not seen to be divided and arguing among ourselves. After all, we are supposed to look at what the Auditor General has reported on, not speculations in the air. The committee is expected to resume its public hearings next month. At least 80% of the Teshi Link Road in the Greater Accra region has been constructed. This is according to the Member of Parliament for Lujukuku, Dr. Bernard Okuboy. Now, the 7.5 kilometer road, which is being constructed by Messrs. DSR Holdings Inc., a company based in Dubai, connects the Spinktus Road and Teshi Laskala. City News' Philip Nilati has more in this report. The much spoken about road, popularly referred to as the Lekma Road, connects the Spintex Road through the Manet Estates, Agbiza and Teshilaskala. This project has been captured as one of the major road infrastructure under construction on the delivery tracker in the Lajokuku municipality. The nature of the road was of grave concern to many residents of the area and the public until 
the government awarded it on contracts for completion. Before the government's intervention, residents and commuters alike staged series of demonstrations over the deplorable state of the road, decrying the potholes which kept increasing in size and debt by the day, as well as the unbearable dust it generated. City news checks on the Lekma Road indicated that work is going on steadily. Some of the divers who ply the stretch shared their excitement about the level of work. Uh, Fitty <laughs> it's far, far, far better, but uh, we are praying. It left with, um, let's say, 15 to 20% to be done. Um, as you can see, a very few meters from here to like the end there, and to the police station at station to that main road, the traffic light, where we normally call La Scala. Uh -huh. So a few meters here, a few meters there to be done. And we pray that this thing should be done before even the end of the year. Any driver, or if you drive, you know, if you apply a rough road, you know how it is. You spend a lot of money on your spare passes and stuff. Even a car gets some damages, basically because of the road. So I would say personally, Papi Kofi Trump, I would say, even my people are happy. That 90, almost 90% is done. And any moment from now, we wish, we wish, we wish that it will be done. And everybody will be happy, especially the drivers. Commercial drivers will be happy. Taxi drivers, total drivers, everybody is happy that the road is on speed. And as you can see, there's uh, work going on. We hope they, they finish it hard and they don't leave it. You see, I have to thank God for what the government have done for us. At first, it was not easy. Before you move from here, leaving to Agriza, we spend almost 45 to 30 minutes before you get to Agriza. But as, as, right now, I can see, I can see uh, yourself. How is it now? Can you use five minutes from here to Agriza? The MP for Lejokuku, who doubles as a deputy health minister, Dr. Bernardo Koboy, says he's hopeful the projects will be completed before the year 2020 ends. As I speak, the road is about 80% complete. But as I was driving by today, I mean, they are now doing the pavements, the walkways. I mean, it's, it's advanced very well. And constituents are happy. After thanking the Almighty, let me thank His Excellency Ekufado uh, and Honorable Makwata for showing commitment and finishing this road for us. And also, let me also thank the media. You've done a very good job. You, you came on the road, you, you brought attention, you kept the attention on, you also supported constituents, and my constituents are grateful. Are you telling your constituents that the Lekma Road will be completed before the December post comes in? Inshallah, we only pray for life. You know, right before our eyes. Street lights, markings. In fact, the last time I said, if you are not careful, if you've been away for a long time, you might get lost in Lejukuku. That is the new California coming up.
It's not watching the City Newsroom. We are going for a break. When we return, City TV's keyboard idol sees its first ever eviction. We'll share the details with you when we return. Rigwald Solutions is a wholly owned Ghanaian company that offers multiple engineering solutions for the extractive and petrochemical industries. We manufacture industrial bolts and nuts, fasteners, hoses and fittings. From our factory at Kejibri in Takrade in the western region of Ghana, Rigwald Solutions employs Ghanaians to produce world-class products. With cutting-edge technology, all products are manufactured to ensure the strictest adherence to customer specifications. The threading, cutting, chamfering are at the heart of every production process at Rigworld Solutions. From the coating, to the sun blasting, the washing and the phosphate treatment, our quality control checks are the most rigorous in the industry. We have instituted full part traceability throughout the manufacturing process and all products are measured and inspected for specification conformity before deployment to you. Locate our factory in Kejabri of the Takradi Takwa Road. Call 0302-949917 or 0540-107504. Email enquiries at rigworldsolutions.com. Rigworld Solutions, crafted in Ghana, engineered for the world. I use the finest materials for this building. I can see that. But my brother, you know we just last year you built this house? Oh yeah. When the wall started to peel off like banana due to rising down? My brother, that's been my issue. I've tried so many things, but nothing works. You know what? They even use that black 